Okay. Um, insect of the sea, and uh, the reason they're called insect of the sea because they have, because of their mouth part, they have it. Uh, they have a uh, mouth part which is similar to uh, insects. And, and I'll go over that. I will go over that. We'll talk about it. Um, lobster, crayfish, shrimp. Crab, uh, barnacles, water fleas. Um, yeah, we do have water fleas. Uh, so these are examples of them. We do have them here on your. Uh, they have mandibles, the mouth part that I was talking about. Insects have them, and these guys have them. Crustaceans, that's what they call them. Uh, insect of the sea because of their mandible, the mouth part. Okay, uh, two mandibles crush food. Two maxilla shred food. And two pairs of antenna and maxilla, they have, these are um, animals that they have, antenna. And antenna is used for sensory, and maxilla is used for masticatory and food handling. Masticatory means uh, crushing food, just like your stomach. Um, and then some of them have cephalothorax, uh, the um, cephala and thorax is combined together. Uh, thorax and abdominal appendages, uh, uh, for walking and or uh, swimming, first pair of walking leg is called chilipet or a bear chilla, which I will show you a picture. We'll talk about that. The function of that is for grasping food and predation and defense. Uh, swim reds, uh, they are after the walking legs. They are swim reds and uh, for swimming and or reproduction. The first pair of the very first pair of swim reds is used for reproduction. And the sexes of the, these animals are dioecious. Uh, so uh, the first pair of the male um, look different than the first pair of the swimmers. I'm talking about swimmers than female. And then the male uh, transfers sperm from swimmers to the female. Appendages are branched by ramus. OK, that's what they are. They are the appendages, it means their uh, swimmers and uh, the legs are uh, branched. Uh, rosterum is in front of the animal, uh, at, and the anterior end, telson is posterior end, and uropod also tail fan, which I'll show you some pictures, hopefully we'll see. Carapace is, is the exoskeleton that covers the cephalothorax. Uh, tergum, they are segments on the uh, dorsal portion of the animals, plates of exoskeleton sternum on the ventral portion of the animal, we talked about that. Telson is where abdomen and te uh, terminates and anus uh, found here. Uh, Celum is around the excretory organs and gonads. So uh, just like other organisms we studied in here, celum is not from head to toe like annelids. They are compartmentalized. They are in a compartment. Uh, and in this case, around excretory organ and gonads. Muscles are striated. Of course, when you go to red lobster, you eat lobster, you're eating skeletal muscle of uh, these animals. Uh, flexor muscles uh, draw the animal uh, uh, apart toward the body. That's what flexor muscles do. And extensor muscles make the animal straight. So that's how uh, they move. Uh, extensor muscles straighten out the animal. Open circulatory system, of course. And blood is, uh, is hemolytic. Uh, class Malacosturica, largest class in the crustacean. And Asticus Asticus is the one we have in the lab. You can dissect it if you want. Uh, bring it out sometime uh, today, next week. Anytime you ask uh, for it, you can bring it. Gills are feather-like when you dissect them. After you move the carapace underneath, you find the feather-like structures, and that's the gills, the gills of these animals. They have mandible, of course, you know, for footing. Uh, for food, uh, large uh, chilipet uh, for offense, defense, uh, food catching, and handling. Uh, hemocyanin, it means their blood has a copper structure, it's a blue. Uh, stomach has cardiac chambers and pyloric chambers. I'm, re I'm waiting for the cornea of the eye, it's divided into facets, two compound eyes, and they do have simple eyes as well. Two antenna and two antennae. Uh, at the base of the antennials, they have statocysts. Statocysts is a structure uh, that is for balance of the animal. When the animals swim, they have to balance themselves. 
we have the same structure established in our ears. So in our ears, our ears allow us to balance ourselves. Okay. So uh, these guys, they have these structures on statocyst sac, which is underneath of their antenna. So that's what they use for, <laughs> for balancing. Green gland it is also in the same area, a little bit uh, right in the same area, but it is called green gland because when you freshly dissect the animal, you see them green. They're part of the excretory system, the green gland. But when uh, you have these dissected material with the animals that have been preserved and you're going to dissect them, you don't see them green. You see, you see them creamish color. So, but they are green gland. They're big when you dissect. They're huge. Uh, you will see them. Statolith, uh, statocyst is smaller. It's a smaller stack. That's a little bit tougher to see. When you open up, you have to be very careful so you don't destroy these. But these are hard to destroy because they're so big, and you see at least portion, a portion of green one. First pair of walking leg is a chilipet, and right here, that's what I was talking about. So these huge legs you see uh, on these uh, lobster or crayfish, the whole entire leg is called chilipet, but the end of it, Right here, the piercing part that uh, pinches and so on and so forth is called chilla. Okay, and then you do have these walking legs right here, and then you have swim rats. These are the swim rats. The first pair of swim rats is used for, uh, as I said, the production. You you can tell apart male from female by first pair of swim rats. Of course, the ones we have, the crayfish we have here, are very small. You have to look at them and dissect these both be able to tell if it is male or female. The rest of the animal, okay, they have two uropet on the back, and right in the middle of it is a talson, and anus is right in the talson, and two uropet on that side, two uropet on this side, allow the animal to maneuver itself while they're swimming in the water. Okay, so that's for uh, like a tail of an airplane, the best analogy I have. So they uh, allow the animals to move. Again, they have the heart, around the heart is a pericardium, and we have the open circulatory system, uh, digestive system, and then these are all your flexor and extensor muscles right in this area. So when you're eating the animal, you're eating all of these muscles in this area, uh, and that's it. Okay, the green gland uh, is called an antineal gland, but this is the green gland right here. Maybe this is not from your textbook. Let's go, uh, here it is, saying a green gland. Uh, I have a lot of these pictures for you guys. But, uh, uh, here's a cross section of the animal. I hope I have one from your textbook. No, I guess I don't have it. So this is pretty much it. This is the green gland and the compound eye. There are a couple of simple eyes in here, rosterum, right here, antenna, antennials. These two small ones are antennials, and stomach, heart, so on and so forth. Okay, the cross section of the animal, this is from your textbook. When you cut the animal cross section, as you remove the carapace, you see they uh, look like a feather. The gills are here and the gills are there, and uh, the rest of the animal right there. Uh, some of the crustaceans, I suppose. Uh, yes, Alex. Uh, for lab practical, we take green gland. Do we have one? For lab practical, we take green gland. Yeah, you can see it on this model. You can see the green, uh, green plant on this model right here. Um, they didn't show it very well. Uh, but right here, this is your green plant, right here. Rasterum, compound eye, compound eye, green plant, stomach, okay, flexor and extensor muscles. Here is the gill that I was talking about. If you, they don't show it on this one, okay, because gills cover all of this. But right here, these are the gills. That's the eye, that's the rosterum. Uh, uh, chilla pet, chilla, uh, swim rats. Uh, and then on the other model, you see two, um, two nice, beautiful, uh, right here. Okay, on this model, you do not have swim rats. They don't, they didn't put in there. But you have two beautiful uropet, uropet, telson. And anus is right here. Hope I'm making in the back, so it's Europe, Europe, 
Telson. So again, this model is not very good for a Europed Telson. Well, so it's good for Europed. One of the Europed is showing nicely. Okay, now other organisms, again, don't worry about classification of uh, crustacean. It's just too much, and I'm sure the next edition of your textbook is going to change. Uh, but for now, uh, all you have to know class uh, Malacosterica, which uh, uh, these guys are in there, uh, the crayfish. Okay, isopoda, uh, terrestrial, some are marine and freshwater. Uh, wood lines, pill bike. If you have, if you were a child, you played with pill bike. Uh, that's what they belong to. They, they are crustacean, if you would. And uh, no carapace usually. Cessar, compound eyes, gills, and that's it. Copepods. Couple uh, this is the one you're familiar with. Okay, cyclops. You studied uh, this uh, guinea worm in the past, uh, and then. Um, what happens, the L1 of the um, uh, Dracunculus medinensis goes into this copepod, and then we drink the copepod, and then we get uh, the guinea worm. Do you remember this okay. animal? Okay, the name of the, uh, the, the genus, name of the genus that we drink from contaminated water is Cyclops. And Cyclops belongs to uh, Copepods. Again, don't want, do not worry about family, order, any of these guys. Uh, class. No compound eyes. They do not have major food for whales. Uh, some of the, I'm not saying cyclops. Some of the species in this group, I call it group. Uh, they are food for whales and fishes, and some are ectoparasitic. Uh, barnacles. Uh, they are ectoparasites of whales. If you look at whales, and you see how. There are little things coming off of them. Those are all barnacles. Barnacles also attached to the ships, moving ships, and um, they are really a, a, a pest. Can be parasitic damage ships and speeding boats. Uh, Daphnia, we do have Daphnia in the lab uh, for you to look at them on a micro microscope, and it's called water flea. Common name for it is water flea, and uh, there are parts in, the in the, your slide description. Uh, there are parts I ask you to identify or water flea. Diet of many fishes and whales, and so on and so forth. Don't worry about this last one. I should have to correct. Yeah, this is a barnacle. For a long time, they thought this belongs to mollusks. They thought this is a, uh, it's a mollusk, but uh, it just recently uh, they moved them from mollusks and they put them in uh, arthropods uh, because they have a lot of similarities to arthropods and mollusks. This is some of the structure of it. Because of lack of time, I'm not going to go over it. Don't worry about the structure of them for your lab practical or the now. Just, um, I, I used, I, I, this is not in your textbook. I took it from somewhere else. And I, when we had time, I was going to go over uh, some of this to explain it why barnacles are not mollusks anymore. Um, let's move on. Uh, Subphylum hexapoda, the most important subphylum. Among all five <coughs> subphylums, this is the most important one. Yes? Um, who decides to move the animal? Who decides that? <laughs> who decides that? Uh, <laughs> just like you saw the movie, there were scientists who are authority in the field. They're doing research daily. On all of these videos you watched, you saw some of the people who make those decisions. Let's move them from here to there. Um, a lot of these guys are here in California, Berkeley, but they're spread all over UC Berkeley. Uh, but they're spread all over the country. But I would say a lot of them are here. Uh, yeah. Um, you saw them on the videos. Those are the ones who proposed, let's move them around. Let's put them. And of course, based on DNA as well. Now DNA is coming to the picture. In old days, it was based on homology, similarities between the structures yeah. of the animal. Uh, but nowadays, they use DNA as well. Okay. Uh, uh, class hexapoda, insects. Uh, again, the most important one, class insecta in this uh, subphylum. And study of <coughs> insects is called entomology. You're familiar with that. Entomology study of insects. Only insects, not arthropods. A lot of people make mistakes and they think uh, entomology means study of arthropods. No. 
Entomology means the study of class insecta. All of the insects by themselves. They could be a phylum, two or three. But anyway. Um, infestation, as you know, we talked about this at the beginning of semester. They cause infestation, and that is outside of the animal, outside of us, any animal. Um, for example, the mite, in, uh, the uh, demodex we studied, you remember that? The demodex in dogs and cats, it's a ectoparasite and it causes infestation. If you take your dog, your cat to the veterinarian and the vet says your dog is infected with demodex, correct them. Tell them, Mr. Vet or Mrs. Vet, <laughs> my, my dog is infested with uh, the demodex. But anyway, uh, infestation, and of course, some of them, they cause infection. You do have a slide of the, a, a, a horse uh, stomach. You have a piece of horse stomach, uh, which is these, the larval stages are in the stomach of the horse. Do not bother horses, but these, as the uh, horses poop, uh, they become actually fly. But the larval stages are inside of the horse. And you will see some of the examples. Some of them, uh, they poke a hole in the back of the animals. Uh, it's gross. I've seen some gross pictures uh, in squirrels. I've seen horses, uh, cows. I've seen, uh, but anyhow. So uh, it's possible for these guys to cause both infection and infestation. One species. One species can cause infection and infestation. So anyhow. Uh, most parasitic arthropods are similar to free living relatives, different behavior, uh, physiology, mode of uh, life, so on and so forth. Largest class, of course, obvious, everybody knows that. Largest class, mastered in every habitat except the ocean. Um, insects, for some reason or another, did not go to the ocean. Uh, of course, the cousins, I would call them cousins, are in the ocean, which are the crustaceans. Which are the crustaceans. They have mandibles. Mandibles, you know, speaking of devil, they are mandibulate animals. They have mandibles in the mouth part. The crustaceans have mandibles in the mouth part. So they are related to each other, if you will. Uh, mouth parts, chewing, sucking, uh, sponging, uh, head, thorax, and abdomen. Okay, some of them have all uh, distinguished head, thorax, abdomen. Two eyes, usually three. Uh, simple eyes, the thorax has three parts and entire, and either two wings uh, or four wings attached to it. Uh, prothorax, mesothorax, two wings, four wings. Uh, metathorax, two wings, halters. Uh, halters, um, it's a vestigial. They removed, in some species, they removed the halters. The animal still could fly, but they did not have a directional form. But again, uh, some scientists argue that this is. Uh, the, the halters in some of the species, like in housefly that we have, uh, they are vestigial. They really do not have a function. They are there, but they do not have a function. Um, usually six legs, they get stuck. Direct or indirect uh, flight muscles, uh, first uh, flying animals, we already know that. What I mean by direct and indirect, you might get a picture later on. Yeah, you do have a picture later on. Let, let's wait, if not, uh, quickly I say, direct flight muscles are the flight muscles from inside of the body attached to the wings. That's a direct flight muscles. Indirect flight muscles, it is, the, the muscles are attached to the sternum and tergum. So the tergum and sternum, when the, uh, uh, when the muscles are contracting, so the sternum and uh, tergum are moving, so the wings are moving. Okay. Evolutionary-wise, they say the indirect flight muscles are more advantageous. They are uh, evolved later than direct flight muscles. Direct flight muscles, when the muscles are attached directly to the uh, wings, that's more primitive, they say. Uh, F3 gota, what, you know what uh, uh, P-T-E-R-Y means? We already talked about it. It means wing. Okay. These are wingless. These are the insects that they do not have a wing. Wingless insects, there are two orders of them, little of any metamorphosis. And example, springtails or uh, snow fleas, silverfish. Terigota, on this one, you guys, on 
this one, the P is pronounced. On this one, P is not pronounced. This is called te gota. This is called epte gota. Okay, epte gota and te gota. Te gota are the insects that they have wings. They have wings and uh, or uh, lost them, but uh, they have there are 22 orders, different degrees of metamorphosis. Uh, Exotrigota. Um, heavy metabolis is a term. It means heavy it means almost, almost complete metamorphosis. That's what hemi metabolis means. And then what does that mean? It means the egg becomes a nymph, and a nymph becomes adult. A nymph is almost similar, close, look like an adult. That's what a nymph is. Okay. The other one, uh, incomplete, as I said, incomplete metamorphosis. Rings form during uh, final mold, and uh, end of trigota, it means hollow, complete metamorphosis, hollow uh, metabolism. It means what? You have an egg, you have a larva, you have a pupa, and finally you have a dog. The larva and pupa do not look like a dog. Okay, so the larva and pupa do not look like a dog. You will see we do have them um, in the lab. Uh, you have a uh, fruit fly. In this one, holometabolus, you have fruit fly, you have this. On one slide, on one slide, you have egg, you have larva, you have pupa, and of course you have adult male and female. So on the fruit fly, on the slide in the lab, you should be able to tell apart between male and female. If you have a difficult time, let me know, we'll go over uh, to get it. Okay, yes? Uh, so, Jerry Goda, there's exo, Jerry Goda, and endo. Yes. What, is, what does that describe? Okay, um, again, a lot of times these are your textbook or other places referred to them as a subclass. Okay, but, but anyhow, to answer your question, what is the, don't worry about the classification. All I want you to study the orders and the class. Okay, but now, except Trigota, they are hemi, uh, hemi metabolous animals. It means the egg, that's what a egg so it means egg, nymph, larva. End of trigota, it means they are holometabolous, and they do have egg becomes larva, becomes pupa, becomes uh, adult. At the beginning of semester, I think it was first exam or second exam, I, told, I talked about uh, metamorphosis. Arthropods, some insects go through metamorphosis. Here we are elaborating on it a little bit more. Okay, not in great detail, but again, um, a little bit. End of trigota is subclass. Don't worry about that. Uh, but end of trigota, it means the animals that they go through complete metamorphosis. That's all. Uh, the whole metamorphosis is complete. Wings form during uh, pupation. That's what it means. Pupa. Okay, wings are formed during that incomplete metamorphosis, which I said they are end of trigota. Different types of metamorphosis. Uh, there are, beside those two types of metamorphosis that I mentioned, uh, uh, holometabolus and uh, uh, hemimetabolus, there are other types as well. Uh, again, I just list them quick for you uh, that don't, you don't think there are only two types of metamorphosis. These whole, or holometabolus, is, um, again, uh, mentioning it uh, one more time. Nymph and pupa, the difference between nymph and new pupa, nymph is an immature stage in the uh, morphologically, I said that, uh, similar to adult, I talked about that. Pupa, larva stage before the adult stage in holometabolic insects not necessarily look like adult. And you will see that on your slide of um, uh, fruit fly. Okay, this is, you will see that on the slide of your fruit fly. Okay, here, really great. I do have the picture. Here is, <clears throat> here is the indirect flight muscles. This is a muscle right here attached to pterygium and attached to the sternum. And here the other muscles, okay, longitudinal muscles right here, and they are uh, attached to the circular muscles. So when these muscles contract, as a result, the wing goes up and down, up and down. That, this is indirect flight muscles. Okay, indirect flight muscles. Another thing about these insects that uh, this is the male uh, 
reproductive tract, very similar to human. You have testes, you have sperm duct, and then accessory or glands, uh, seminal uh, vesicles, ejaculatory duct, and at the end, penis. Female, on the other hand, they have another structures which we human do not have. Okay. Here is a fe ovary, and then you have the lateral oviduct, and the oviduct come into um, common oviduct, they call it, and then finally to uterus and vagina, right here. But they have another structure, it's called accessory gland, the right here. <coughs> Spermatheca, this is a female. This is a female reproductive tract. They have a structure called spermatheca, and spermatheca is a sac that stores sperm. When the male transfers sperm to female, then they can be stored here to fertilize the egg at a later time. We humans do not have that. The sperm in human is viable 24, 48 hours top. After 48 hours, the human, uh, in human, the sperm will die. Okay, they are not uh, viable. They, can, they use viable. But these guys, they can stay there for a while to fertilize the eggs. So that's a structure we humans do not have. These guys have a sperm of uh, Worm-like larva, caterpillar, butterfly, grub. Oh, uh, grub is something, I wish one of these years, I've got to uh, take a picture of it, that you can see a big hole in the back of the animal. What happens, um, the animal licks the egg, the egg from feces or from the environment, and the egg of this grub goes inside of the stomach, uh, the stomach stay in the stomach, and eventually when they want to become adult fly, they go in the back of the animal and they poke a hole and they fly away from back of the animal. Interesting, I, first I heard that, I thought it was insane, but, uh, but I should finally grab a picture of it. And uh, usually they have farmers who have cows, you know, they cannot sell the leather, they sell the meat and it's all okay, but the leather of the cow is not uh, valuable because the cow in the back of them, they have both. Of course, that causes infection, the animal can die, and so on and so forth. It's not very healthy. Yes? So, so when, it does that, is it necessarily, when it does that, does it necessarily kill most of them? I mean, like it's, it's it not does not one. kill the animal. Can animal die usually of secondary infection? Yeah. They do not die because of, you know, uh, some animals become paralyzed because it comes from the back of the animal, can uh, damage the, our, uh, the spinal cord, some of the, uh, uh, I should put some pictures in here. Molting from molting from molting is between the stage of each molting is called star or uh, instar or stage, okay, so, and that's what uh, these animals uh, usually have. Osmoregulations, let's go over these quickly. There is only one thing in osmoregulations that I'd like to mention, in, uh, impermeable uh, integuments, of course, you know that, malpighian tubules, okay. This is the one that I'm hoping you would know. Malpighian tubules um, and rectum, they act like our large intestine, they absorb excess water and minerals in these animals, okay. <clears throat> Absorb ions, here we go, uh, uh, from hemolymph. Rectal pads absorbs water and uh, return it to hemolymph. Respiration, uh, oxygen directly from the air. Uh, spiracles, grasshopper has spiracles on these models. Make sure you find them. We have two, three models of uh, grasshopper. So look at them. And these holes right here, on the abdomen, this is the abdomen of the animals, these holes are called spiracles. And what happens in these spiracles, oxygen get in, and it goes to the uh, lungs, and from lungs, uh, it's absorbed throughout the body, trachea and lungs. Uh, why spiracles have valves in these animals? Because uh, of the, uh, the air has parasites, dust, so they close, the valves will close, so uh, parasites and dusts will not get inside of the animal. That's uh, the main reason. Uh, trachea branches to tracheoles. Uh, what is the difference between trachea of spiders and insects? What is, the what is the main difference between trachea of spiders and insects? The trachea of spiders, uh, usually, number one, they do not have valves. The spiracles do not have valves. 
And the other one, the uh, trachea of spiders usually do not branch. So these animals, the insects, uh, seems to be our more advanced animals. Uh, the spiders are more primitive arthropods, based on these few things that I mentioned. Aquatic insects have gills. Um, uh, there are some aquatic insects. Um, don't think that I said they, they, they did not master the ocean. They did not, but they have them. You have them in ponds, lakes. You saw it in the video. In the video, they can be found, uh, insects can be found in ponds and lakes. Here we go, metamorphosis beetle. This is an example of a beetle. Uh, they go through, uh, this is holometabolus. We talked about it, egg larva, pupa, and adult. Uh, don't worry about the structures in here too much. I'm not worried about it. Um, so let's move on. Uh, what adaptations uh, do insects have for weather changes? Uh, some die after releasing eggs. That's why it is important to have harsh winters to kill the arthropod. Now our, our environment is changing and we are not having harsh winters as much. That's not good because then arthropods, the population can go up and they can infect us all year round. That's uh, one of the disadvantages. Diapause uh, can happen in any stage uh, of eggs. Um, what I mean by did I mean, uh, eggs, larva, pupa, or adult? It means diapause. It means a portion of the animal, uh, for example, the muscles in the abdomen, they go into a rest during harsh seasons, during cold seasons. The rest of the animal functions, but their uh, metabolism slows down in portions of the body. And it can happen in an instant. Uh, partial endothermy, it means portion of the body temperature uh, drops. It's different than diapause, two different concepts. Uh, so the temperature here drops, partial endothermy. Uh, the other one, the metabolism st uh, slows down diapause. Pile, it is when they have deposits of fat or glycogen uh, on their body somewhere and uh, they can, over the winter, which there is not enough food and they cannot go out, it's colder, they use that deposits of uh, fat and glycogen in their body. That's what pile means. Uh, sensory organs and nervous system, mechanoreceptors, you all know what that means. It means they, uh, they have receptors that can be by touched, uh, they are mechanically touched. Chemoreceptors, thermal, smell, they can smell things. And companies are hexagonal, not rectangular facets like uh, crustaceans. Antenna is part of the central nervous system. Uh, no flying control center, no cockpit. One of the amazing things about these animals, there is no a flight control center. They're flying, they do a lot of activities. You saw in the video, they can mate while they're flying. They can deposit their egg like dragonfly while they're flying. And how is that being controlled? Um, we don't know. We just don't, they don't know that. Um, how is so? There is no cockpit, pretty much. Uh, the pattern of the fly. The digestive system, a pair of mandibles. We talked about that. The hyperpharynx. These are, you do have a slide of grasshopper mouth part on your, uh, um, on your slide collection. So these are the parts that uh, I'm hoping you would be able to find. Mandible. Hyperpharynx, uh, labrum, upper lips, labium, lower lips, and well, of course, you do not have foregut, uh, midgut, and hindgut, um, but there is one more in there. Oh, uh, maxillary. You do have maxillary as well in, um, in that slide as well. Okay, foregut have crop and gizzard, midgut has seca and stomach, and hindgut, intestine, and rectum. What do you guys think? The crop and gizzard, cecum and stomach, which one is for, uh, for gut is for digestion or absorption? Digestion. digestion. And same as cecum, they store food, stomach, again, another digestion. Midgut, also some uh, dig uh, digestion. And hindgut, most of it is for absorption. Hindgut is for absorption. And you already know that from the beginning of uh, semester material. 
Many ants and termites cultivate fungi in their burrows. Again, if you didn't know, yes, they are farmers. And there's some there are some stories that we learn farming from them. We human at the beginning of the time we saw these creatures and they grew. Uh, so we learned it from them. Okay, reproduction and behavior, fertilization is internal, oviparous, all of them, all three of them by uh, insects is possible. And you learned that at the beginning of semester. We talked about that, what they are. Uh, Eosocial, it means they are, uh, they have, like, they have a queen, they have uh, soldiers, you know about that in case of termites and um, uh, ants. Bees, they have those social structures. Okay, let's go over the orders. Um, the orders that you guys have to know are um, either mentioned in your lab man, uh, in your uh, lecture notes, and also if we have specimen there, uh, order of insects. The only orders you have to know is belong to class insecta, okay, for lab practical purposes. And then of course for lecture purposes, Whatever is mentioned here, I hope I'm making some sense. There are not too many. There are only four or five orders I'm asking you to know. Uh, and they are the most important orders. Okay. Um, there are many, 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 many more. And they're all listed in your textbook. Uh, I would say there are like 25, 30 orders. They're listed in your textbook. I only ask for four or five of them here. So order orthoptera, cockroach, grasshopper, crickets, uh, mantids and walking sticks, they all belong to this order. Um, or another name, uh, they say cockroach. Uh, this order does not have two names, it's just a cockroach. Some scientists put it in this order, uh, the Diptera, and some scientists put it in Orthoptera. If I show you, we do have cockroach in there. If I give you a cockroach and I say what order does it belong to, Orthoptera is fine. And uh, they, you know, if you go to a grocery store, you want to buy some insect killers, usually they call it ortho, is the name of the company, possibly because of this. Uh, you want to kill uh, crickets, I guess. Uh, 